ಮಂದಹಾಸೆ ಶರಮಣೀಯ ದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸ ರುಚಿರಾಜ್ನಾಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರ್ನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀಜ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಮಾಟಿ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮಿ ಕಠೋರ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡಿಯೋ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಫಾರ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ನ್ಯೂ ಇಯರ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಲಾರ್ಜ್ ಡೆಕೋರೇಟೆಡ್ ಕೌರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸುರಾಖಾ ಚರ್ಚ್ ದರ್ಬಾರ್ ಇನ್ ಲೋಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿ ಡಿಯೋಟೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿ ಸಂತೋಸ್ ವರ್ ಸಿಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅನ್ ಅಸೆಂಬ್ಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದರ್ ವರ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಸೆಸನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಭಗವದಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿವಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆಸ್ ಶ್ರೀಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಫೇತ್ ಇನ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸನ್ ಕಪಲ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದರ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಶ್ರೀಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ರಿಪ್ಲೈ ವಾಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಫೇತ್ ಇನ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸನ್ ಕಪಲ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದರ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ನಾಟ್ ಡೂ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸೇಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದೆಮ್ ಹಿ ವುಡ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ಎನಿ ಫಿಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ರಿಡಿಕಲ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಜರ್ಸ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ವೆಲ್ತ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ವೈಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವುಮೆನ್ ಸಿ ವುಡ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ಹರ್ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಶ್ರೀಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನೆರೇಟೆಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ರಜಪೂತ್ ಗಲೂಜಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಡೆಡ್ಯೂಸರ್ ಕುಸಲ್ ಕುವರ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಆಫ್ ಧರಂಪುರ್ ಪರ್ವತ್ ಬಾಯ್ ರಾಜ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಜೀವು ಬಾಯ್ ಲಾಡು ಬಾಯ್ ಮೋಟಾ ರಾಮ್ ಬಾಯ್ ದಾದಾ ಖಾಚರ್ ಮಾಂಚಾ ಭಕ್ತ ಮುಲ್ಜಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚಾರಿ ಲಾದಿ ಬಾಯ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಆಫ್ ಭೂಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾವು ಟುಡೇ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಅವರ್ ನ್ಯಾರೆಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಮುಕ್ತಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಾಟ್ ಮುಕ್ತಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸೇಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಟೈನಿಂಗ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಆರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸಂತ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಮುಕ್ತಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ದೇ ನ್ಯೂ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಮುಕ್ತಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸತ್ ಸಂಗ್ ದೇ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟೂ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಮುಕ್ತಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಮದರ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಇವನ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ದ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೇನ್ ಸಂತ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮುಕ್ತಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಓರ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ದ ಐಡಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಸರ್ವಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮುಕ್ತಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ this all titles not merely we gave muktanand swami but this is all because of his life was such that we can give him such kind of titles an idol of love par excellence for maharaj even the many titles given to muktanand swami but one of the main title given by maharaj himself that is the guru because maharaj himself also believed and behaved with muktanand swami as muktanand swami was his guru because as maharaj came to uh, came to gujarat in the form of nilkantwarni and first he met muktanand swami in loj and as he desired to meet ramanand swami but ramanand swami wrote a letter from bhuj and in that later maharaj uh, ramanand swami gave command to nilkantwarni that if you wish to stay here in our satsang then you have to you have to remain in agnya of muktanand swami and that is why until ramanand swami met nilkantwarni nilkantwarni stay in the commands of muktanand swami even more than 9 months that is why maharaj also believe and behave in front of muktanand swami as muktanand swami was a guru and he himself as a disciple of him and all these titles 
are for our sampradaya but for us as we are the disciple of muktanand swami because muktanand swami is the first guru in our spiritual lineage so that we can say muktanand swami is our guru and that is why the main sant or the ideal of servitude or the ideal of love par excellence for maharaj or the guru of maharaj is the guru of our all loyadam parivar devotees and that is why we pr- we have proud that we are muktanandi and all these titles and all these because of muktanand swami's life is not a any ordinary life of any sant but muktanand swami is a ocean of saintliness his each and every moment his each and every step he walked or if he lived each and every second that all has a different look or different you can say experience by the others because of his saintliness muktanand swami he born as a human being on this earth on 31st january 1758 or we can say according to our hindu calendar on the auspicious day of pous vad satam 1814 seventh year his father's name was anandram and his mother was radha bai and they gave uh, this child the name with mukun so muktanand swami's childhood name was mukun and as mukun grew up he has many many virtues by his birth like he can sing with very melodious voice the verses of ramayan more than that he he has learned by birth some uh some we can say mastery he had acquired by his birth uh, in san- sanskrit or in sangeet in many 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 virtues field he had acquired mastery by his birth and as he grew up he has only one desire remain in his mind that is to meet bhagwan because he was not an ordinary person but he was descendant from akshardham he 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 was a mukt from akshardham and he came here only because of maharaj command and maharaj desire and that is why he did not have any kind of attachment with these worldly things he had no interest in his family life he had no kind of interest in enjoying the family or social or any worldly enjoyment and that is why he decided to renounce his family he decided to renounce his home and his society and village and everything and after becoming a renunciant he desired to worship bhagwan and that is why he once put his idea to his family meaning his father and mother and as his parent they listen that mukund dis- decided to renounce our family and our house then they deny mukund's desire and instead they try to arrange mukund's marriage then mukund decided this is not good for me if i want to worship bhagwan then i have to remain renunciant otherwise without attaining form celibacy or brahmacharya one cannot worship fully bhagwan and that is why he decided to give up all his family or his social activities for mukun this this would not be an easy task he was both virtuous and able to earn money suddenly an idea came to him he understood that no relation in this world is without self interest and thought i should act as if 
I was mad and as there is no value for a man uh, there there is no value for a mad person in the society then i will be allowed to become a sanyasi so now in his very young age mukund decided to renounce his family and the family or we can say the parents they deny his idea and that is why mukund decided to do another thing and that is to get a permission from his parents but how one can get permission as they falsely deny his proposal then he came with the another idea that he decided to behave or act as an <coughs> madman so in this world no one is looking for such madman and that is why mukund started to behave as a crazy boy when he would anyone ask him anything he would reply ho oh. and then proceeded to sing and dance ram gata gat mauli phuli so in this way there is no any particular meaning with this words ram gata gat mauli phuli but only one who has no any sense who has no any intelligence or one who has no his mind he can only speak words without meaning and that is why people understood mukund he become a mad and that is why people view for mukund change as before all the villagers they understood mukund is very virtuous child and there is no one like him in the whole village and on the other hand after behave as started this behavior by mukund so the villagers they have change their attitude towards mukund and very often complaints were started with mukund's parents held hope that mukund would take care of them in the future eventually mukund stopped going home he would sleep at someone else house and would make other children cry in the absence of their parents he would exchange the babies from cradles of other to other homes when the mothers came to know that their babies have been exchanged they would fight amongst one another meanwhile mukund kept on dancing and singing ram gata gat mauli phuli after some time he would confess the fact that he had exchanged the babies then people would rush to beat mukund and to which he had no chance but to run away sometimes he would spill water and milk in another house and then run away he would release the cows of others the whole village was quite troubled due to his this behavior of mukun now all the villagers they one after one came to meet mukun's parent and they all complain about mukun that he was not a person to whom you can keep him in a home please release him so that we can even remain comfort even even in our house because your mukun he came to our house and make all the disturbance and the villagers said continual complaints to atma uh, anandram and radha and they try to make him understand but mukund would say who oh, like a madman like mukund didn't understand anything what the other said at last one they tried to uh, tried by listening to the complaints of villagers uh, with crying eyes his parents said mukund please go elsewhere but do not stay in our house then mukund touched the feet of his parents and set out for an incredible quest in search of a true guru so in this way without any public ridicule or without any other fear that what other think about me mukun be have in such behavior only to renounce his family why because he has faith in the form of bhagwan that he wanted to meet bhagwan and that is why he behave in such a way
And not only that, but he was able to renounce his family without even got getting his uh, getting the permission from his parent. But he wanted to make such an example so that in the future, we can say for today, all the mumuksu they can also work on the same path, and that is why this this path. this idea or this method to renounce one's house or one's family differently make here and started a new path by mukund meaning muktan swami now after renouncing home he had not attained bhagwan after renouncing home he had another challenge and that is to attain such a guru who leads him towards bhagwan first he decided that i if i attain eightfold celibacy or we can say brahmacharya then because of that brahmacharya bhagwan would be pleased upon him and because of bhagwan's rajipo he can attain such a guru who leads him towards bhagwan and for that he was searching for a guru who lead him towards brahmacharya and that is why he search here and there everywhere for a true guru a few days later mukund reveal his thoughts to have guidance for attaining perfect celibacy and the people some some someone from the people he gave him in uh, indication towards dwarkadas who lived in dhangadra then mukun he went there in dhangadra in dwarkadas ashram there he lived for some time even he was not fully satisfied with the behavior of his guru dwarkadas and the other disciples but still after making pleas to dwarkadas mukund asked him about this celibacy then dwarkadas he confessed in front of mukund his disciple that i am not able to teach you the celibacy but if you really want to teach or if you really want to walk on this path then you have to go to meet another guru he might help you and this dwarkadas he gave a, a letter of recommendation and with this letter mukund reached vakaner to meet kalyandas then kalyandas also good as a sadhu but he was not perfect master and that is why after pleasing him as Muk- mukund asked him please guru reveal me the path of celibacy because i want to attain 100% pure brahmacharya then kalyandas he also deny that it is not in my hand he saw the another guru again Muk- mukun without disappointment without discouraging he went there and uh, the another guru he also deny after mukun ask him about this question then he saw him that there was uh, another guru who lived in sardar and his name was tulsidas so mukund stay in gun lived at tulsidas ashram tulsidas was delighted to have such an intelligent and industrious disciple he eventually appointed mukund as the head of the ashram tulsidas delegated all responsibilities to mukund and tulsidas also understood that this is a good disciple who will run all of my ashram and all of the other activities run by my ashram and understand and by this understanding he made mukund the mahan of his ashram the head of his ashram but mukund's aim or his goal was not that to attain the leadership or attain the or becoming a mahan but he want to attain celibacy and he want to meet such a guru who leads him towards bhagwan and finally 
Mukund was disappointed that this is what all these activities I do not want to do this I want to Eve I want to do all these things all these activities but after that I have to attain Brahmacharya and by this Brahmacharya I want to please Bhagwan. Once uh, as a head of the ashram Mukund he was doing Katha he was discoursing to the people and once as Ramanand Swami came to Sardar so all of the villagers who came regularly to listen Mukund's Katha they all did not came there then the next day Mukund asked why did not come uh, why the, the people not coming to listen my Katha then someone informed him about Ramanand Swami that Ramanand Swami was such a great guru so that every single people of this village they went there to listen his katha then Mukund as a disciple he he did not understood himself that I am a Mahant I am the head he understood that I am a disciple I am a seeker who always in search of Bhagwan and Guru and that is why with this curiosity Mukund also reached there in Raman uh, in Raman and Swami Sabha and he said in the other devotees and he attentively listened Raman and Swami's discourses and after that after the end Raman and Swami asked him ask his disciple who is this person then the disciple of Raman and Swami inform him about Mukund that he is the head of Tulsidas ashram and he was very good in doing Katha and he was even very good in his character in his saintliness in this way then Raman and Swami call Mukund near and Raman and Swami strictly said please Mukund you do not come from tomorrow to listen my Katha otherwise there will be problem with Tulsidas so Mukund say it's okay whatever your desire but Mukund realized some peace of mind in his heart that only listening his Katha if I experience such kind of inner peace then definitely this is a true Guru who can lead me towards Bhagwan. then even though Raman and Swami deny him to come to his Sabha still the next day Mukund, all, Mukund came to listen Katha but not sitting in the assembly but there were there was very narrow space outside the room or outside the area where Raman and Swami was discoursing then even though there was rain or there was anything but Mukund he was sat there so that no one can show him and he was attentively listen Raman and Swami's discourses so in this way once Raman and Swami after completing his discourses he passed by this narrow land and then he met Mukund again then Raman and Swami the tears came out from Raman and Swami's eyes then uh, because of Mukund's intense desire to listen Bhagwan's Katha then Raman and Swami asked him what is your desire then Mukund said please make me your disciple I want to meet Bhagwan then Raman and Swami said no this is not true as you are right now disciple of Tulsida so you have to get permission from him and then Mukund said it's okay as it is not hard for me to get permission from my parents then how this thing for me then from the next day as he was the head and in charge of the whole ashram so the ashram of Tulsidas had many many department and one of that department was arm house and 
So Mukun, because of his power, he started to give all those needy people more than they ask. If one asked for one blanket, Mukun gave him three blankets. If someone came there in ashram and asked for some food, then even though there was rules to give only simple food grains, instead of that, Mukun gave him all kinds of foodstuffs and even food and everything. In this way, he started to give all these things from the ashram. So the other disciple, they complained to the Guru, Tulsidas, and Tulsidas asked him, Mukun, what is your intention behind this behavior? Why are you doing this? Then Mukun say, I want, uh, I want to renounce your ashram, your this head leadership or everything. I want to go out from your ashram. Then Tulsidas, he said, it is very good if you renounce my ashram. Otherwise, you will spoil all this income and all this my wealth and property and everything. So please go out from my ashram. Then Mukun said, no, not like that. You have to give me a written permission. Then Tulsidas wrote in a letter and gave that letter to Mukun. And Mukun, without any delay, he immediately renounced his ashram. And after that, he made Ramana Swami in the near, nearer village in Bandia. There, Ramana Swami, as Mukund met Ramana Swami, Ramana Swami was stay in Mulubai's home. Mulubai was a devotee who followed Ramana Swami's instruction. And he was very poor, not a rich man. He was a farmer. So he stayed there in Mulubai's home and Mukund went there to meet Raman and Swami. As he met Raman and Swami, after completing all the formalities like doing Dunwood and everything, as Mukund saw and gave the letter a permission, then Raman and Swami said, this, it is okay, but now, do you really want to become my disciple? Then Mukund said, yes, I want to become your disciple. Please accept me. Then Raman Swami asked him, Do you know what is the duty of a disciple? Then Mukun said, Yes, Guru Maharaj, I know, I know very well. What you say, I have to do that without doubting, without having any question. That is my duty. Then Raman Swami said, It's okay. Then this is Murubai, my duty, and he was poor, so he cannot hire any employers and that is why work in his farm Mukun he was born in a Brahmin family he had renounced his family in his very young age Mukun who did not know anything about farming and still as Guru Ramanan Swami gave him command to work in Mulubai's farm Without any question, without any request, or without any question, Mukund accepted Guru's words and he started to live there in Bandia and started to work in Murubai's farm. So, by this behavior of Mukund, or we can say Muktan and Swami, we can only understand at least understand that one who can able to get everything in spirituality only one who observe one who obey each and every single words of his guru without any question and without any doubt so this is what faith in the form of Bhagwan and guru muktan and swami's life is endless we can say because his life is the, is like ocean of saintliness and he is the idol of faith. And that is why Bhagwan himself narrated his story, not any other Paramhansa story in the Vachanamrut, third of Loya. As Bhagwan is narrating the stories of the devotees who has faith in the form of Bhagwan and son. So this is what some of points we have listened from Muktananda Swami's life. 
there were many many virtues and many many incident in muktanand swami's life we'll continue it later sri ganeshyam maharaj ni jai प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह कंश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी और बिलवेड कंश्याम महाराज <clears throat> the path maker to our liberation puja guru ji puja santo puja bhagat ji shri ji bhagat now we devote is jay swami narayan as we continue uh in the life of sadguru muktanand swami just like how we saw his virtues and how he lived and how he behaved in the past lectures where there is good there is always some kind of bad but in this charitra we won't call it bad we'll call it an example a sample for all of us not only that but when you live amongst many many together everyone has different kinds of natures and due to that there's always some kind of a big or small problem that arises but by reading this prasang in swami's life we'll be definitely able to pick up how swami coped with it how swami reacted towards it and how we should behave if we get into any kind of situation like this <clears throat> The title of this prasang is called Brahmanand Swami's Intelligence. Before I read the charitra, the incident, I want to set up the background. See, in that time, in the time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, there were Bhagwan Swami Narayan initiated a total of over two thousand saints. Amongst those two thousand saints, there were five hundred. main saints called nan santo right you heard of that yeah nan santo inside those nan santos there were very very elite elite saints for example muktanand swami brahmanand swami nityanand swami gopanand swami shukanand swami premanand swami nishkuran swami gunatitanand swami all these were top most 
Anadi Muktos, you can say, of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. They were the top of the top. There was no one better than them as a saint. Now, Bhagwan, due to so many saints he initiated, what he did was he divided those saints into portions and groups and gave each of the elite saint maybe 50 saints or 100 saints, how, how much ever he wanted. And he made a big group from that saint. So, for example, right now, Puja Guruji is in the sixth ancestry of Muktanan Swami's, you can say, lineage. So, in Muktanan, at the time of Muktanan Swami, his Shishya, his disciple, was not only Adharan Swami, but many, many other santos. But his top disciple was Adharan Swami. And it followed so on and so forth till Guruji right now. In the same way, Brahman Swami had many saints under him. Gunatitan Swami had many saints under him. For example, you go to school and you have teacher, right? Your teacher must have at least 30, 40 students kids underneath in the classroom that are he or she is teaching, right? Just like that, these santos, Muktan Swami, Gopan Swami, Gunatyan Swami, Brahman Swami, had many, many santos that they were teaching and guiding to take them and join them with God even more. So, in this prasang, we're going to take a look at what happened inside um, of a mandal of Brahman and Swamis and what happened and what was the reaction. Now I want to first tell you that Muktanan Swami, Brahman Swami, all these santos never possessed any kind of bad natures, okay? But to teach us, to show us and all the people in the future that we should never possess any kind of these natures, that's why they played a role, okay? It's kind of like drama. Have you seen a play before? In a play, there is many, many actors, and they do different, different kinds of things. You know, suppose there's a person and who became who becomes an, a doctor in the act, in the drama. In reality, is that person a doctor? No, but they're just acting. In the same way, when these elite santos came down and descended from Akshardham, to this earth, they played a drama. It was all planned and practiced in Akshardham. And then what they did was they're like, okay, so you play that role, I'll play that role. Let's do this at this village, let's meet up and let's talk like this. At this village, let's do this Leela. You know, when you go to that area and talk to that person, say this to that person. All these things were planned out beforehand. Kind of like blueprints for a house. They were already planned, it was stamped, and it was all good. This is what happened. Let's take a look at what happened in this charitra of Brahmanan Swami. Vasudevan Swami was living in association of Brahmanan Swami. Meaning, Brahman Swami had a saint underneath him. His name was Vasudevan Swami. Brahman Swami was well learned in Sanskrit and full of saintly virtues. As all we know, as all we know, he was considered a senior saint. On one occasion, being unhappy with the behavior of Brahman and Swami, Vasudevan and Swami decided to leave the Satsang Fellowship. As a disciple, there's always a problem. In the Vachamrut Bhagwan says that when the Sant talks about one's nature, or even twists or even touches one's nature, one cannot bear it and due to that one develops an aversion towards that saint, meaning a bad feeling towards that saint. Now for some reason Vasudevan Swami was probably hurt by Brahman and Swami, but Brahman and Swami was not his enemy. At that time he didn't know that. But he must have been, there must have been some kind of an issue. And due to that, Vasudevan Swami decided that he wanted to leave satsang. 
wanted to leave Bhagwan, wanted to leave all those santos and go away far, far away. Let's see what happens. As he was preparing to leave, Muktan Swami thought that if Vasudeva and Swami will go home, mangling a great saint like Brahma and Swami, he'll be thrown into the material pool of miseries. Now, Muktan and Swami was like a mother, right? As we learned. And due to that, he found out somehow that Vasudeva and Swami and Brahma and Swami had some kind of an issue, a problem. Due to that problem, Vasudeva, Vasudeva and Swami wanted to leave. So when Swami found that out, he thought that if this saint leaves, then he will become miserable in the world. And we can see in Swami's behavior, attitude in this prasang, that <clears throat> in the satsangi jivan, it's a big, big book like this. I think this is it, maybe, satsangi jivan right here. It's written by a name, uh, by a saint called Shatanan Swami. And in the satsangi jivan, there's a chapter called Hari Gita. Inside that chapter, there are 64 characteristics of a sadhu. Meaning, you know how a principal or teacher possesses characteristics, right? Like intelligent, um, you know, very sharp, quick, different, different kinds of mem very, mem uh, very powerful memory, all these different kinds of qualities, right? In the same way, a sadhu, meaning a saint, should possess these 64 qualities mentioned in this satsangi jivan to be considered a true saint. Now, out of these characteristics, the number one characteristic of a sadhu is called dayaru, meaning compassionate. A sadhu's first and foremost nature, you can say, you can say the first quality he should possess is compassion, compassion towards all. Meaning, there should be no kind of hatred for anyone. Anyone who comes into that sadhu's contact should feel that they have received something, should feel that they have taken one step closer to Bhagwan. That is the nature of a sadhu. And we can see in this prasang that Sadguru Muktan Swami possessed this quality. He did not want to see Vasudeva and Swami fall. Due to that, Let's see what he did. Therefore, Muktan Swami instructed Vasudevan and Swami to stay in his association so he would be saved from falling from satsang. So Swami said, why don't you come and stay with me? I know you have an issue with Brahman and Swami. The way to solve it is not to run away and go away. Let me ask you, I know you don't have a mic, but you can think in your head, that... Suppose that your house got set on fire. Just an example, okay? Now, you are outside of the house in your garage pathway looking at your house being completely like lit on fire, okay? What is the solution? Calling the police and telling, you know, the firefighters to come and Remove the fire or running away? What will help? Calling the firefighters, right? If you run away, it's not going to solve the problem. In the same way, that Swami, Vasudhan Swami, was a little confused. He didn't know what to do, so he thought running away was the issue. But in reality, Swami figured it out and Swami said, Swami, you don't have to go anywhere. Come and stay with me. I'll take care of you will talk and will solve your issue. So, so that Swami was understanding. He said, okay, no problem. He, he praised about the greatness of Brahman and Swami to Vasudeva and Swami. So the animosity that, were, that was built would be melted. Another characteristic of a sadhu is that he gives man, meaning he gives ego to others. Meaning, Sriji Bhagat is a very good Bhagat. He comes every day to Mandir. Bhagat also does a lot of seva. 
He comes every Sunday to listen to Katha, etc., so on and so forth. Just like this, I gave you man, right? I gave you, I talked about your good qualities. In the same way, Muktan and Swami, what he, what he was doing was that Swami, Vasudevan and Swami, had an issue with Brahman and Swami. So at that time, he did not have good feelings about Brahman and Swami. So Muktan and Swami talked good, good qualities about Brahman and Swami. That Brahman and Swami is such a great learned sadhu. He has constant contact with Bhagwan. He is a very, very uh, virtuous sadhu. So don't develop any kind of bad feelings towards him. This is what Muktan and Swami did. When Brahm well, you know what, we can learn from that too. Suppose someone comes and talk, starts talking bad about, a, about another Bhagat to you. Now, you don't, that Bhagat is not your friend or anything. You don't really even know him. You just know that he comes here and that's it. You've seen him once in a while here and there. But your job right there is to stop that person from talking bad about that other person and speak to him about his good qualities. Like, Bhagat, I understand you have an issue with him, but that Bhagat comes to Mandir every Saturday. He has not missed one Saturday for the whole year. Can you believe that? Have you missed any Saturdays? Meaning, make him realize his glory, his greatness. And due to that, we can say that, you know, if we talk good about others, our self looks down. But in reality, in the eyes of Bhagwan Swami Narin, if we talk good about others, we actually look better and higher and greater. You understand? Bhagwan is pleased upon us. If anyone in this world is pleased or not, no problem. It's not an issue. Because at the end of your life, when you go to Bhagwan's Akshardham, it's only you and Bhagwan. Right? So then who do you really want to looking looking like look good towards, you know, the world or Bhagwan? Yeah, exactly. In the same way, if you find someone, if he's saying he's saying something bad, you should be like, Bhagat, did you know that this Bhagat does so much seva? Or did you know this Bhagat actually has fifty kadis by heart? Can you believe that? I can't believe it either. I, I can barely do it. But this Bhagat is very great. Saying this, number one, Bhagwan will come pleased on you. And number two, that Bhagat will realize the other Bhagat's greatness. You understand? Always do that. If someone comes and talks negative, bad about someone else, you tell them that other person's good qualities on top. That will make you look like a better person and Bhagwan will become pleased and Guruji will become pleased as well. So here's the issue. Now, this is where we're getting at, the core problem. So, you know, Muktan Swami is performing this operation. You know, great saints, they're like doctors, okay? Uh, they have a hospital, they have ICU rooms, and uh, you probably don't know what ICU is, do you? Intensive care unit. It's when people are very seriously ill, you know, very, very serious. It's not like a broken hand or a broken leg. It's like cancer very bad so they have ICU rooms they have those surgery rooms have you seen those yeah the cold rooms where they do surgery no you haven't oh you uh-huh you you saw it huh yeah you passed it. it has the glass doors and everything you saw it right just like that they, you had x-ray, huh? Did you get a surgery done? No. Okay, all right, good. I'm very, seven stitches, not bad. Not bad at all. Lucky number seven, right? Uh, but they have different, different kinds of rooms for patients. ICU is one room. They have the, the surgical unit. They have just regular beds. Different, different patients come into their hospital. And they, one may be just have a broken arm or one may just have stitches like yourself or one needs open heart surgery 
or one needs to be admitted there due to cancer for chemotherapy, many, many different, different kinds of situations, right? You understand. The same way, Muktan Swami was performing an operation in the surgery room to Vasudevan Swami because it was very critical that he would become saved from satsang and not go away, run away. Due to that, Swami was making him, helping him realize the greatness of Brahman and Swami. Here's what the issue arises. Now remember, before I tell you this prasang and read it to you, I want you to understand that this is only an act, okay? It's only a drama. It's like a magic show. It's not real, okay? They're just planning it. They planned it from be before. No santos possess any kind of bad natures, okay? All right, here we go. When Brahman and Swami heard of this, a little jealousy was developed against Muktan and Swami. For a week, one week, Brahman and Swami neither bowed to Muktan and Swami nor he spoke to him. Now what happened was Brahman and Swami showed that he became jealous. Why? Because Brahman and Swami thought that Muktan and Swami took his disciple, Vasudevan and Swami, into his group. You understand? Muktan and Swami already had his personal group of 100 or 200 saints. Now Brahman and Swami, what did he think? That Vasudevan Swami went into his group, meaning Muktan and Swami's group, and he started to, you know, associate with him and learn from him instead of uh, Brahman and Swami. So Brahman and Swami developed a little jealousy. You ever become jealous before? No? Very good. But one time, I know, it happens. It's not an issue. The way to solve it is very important. But we have to first figure out what jealousy is, right? So in the Vachnamrut, Katara, first chapter, 71 Vachnamrut, there was a question asked by Matra Dadal. I don't want you to pronounce that, okay? Because I barely know how to. What is the characteristic of jealousy? That's the question. By? That's what I thought. Sriji Maharaj replied, one who is jealous of someone cannot tolerate that person benefiting in any way. In fact, he would be pleased if misery befalls that person. That is the characteristic of jealousy. Meaning, since Muktan Swami took that sadhu to save him, but Brahman Swami did not know, he thought that he was just taking my sadhu away from me. How could he do this? Because he could not see that Muktan Swami had gained one more sadhu. But in reality, Swami was not doing that, as we learned. Swami was helping Brahman and Swami so he can go back into his mandal and become regular and his mind would become stable. Now, another Vachnamrut, Gadrada, first chapter 78, Bhagwan says, If one has such loyalty for satsang, how can one possibly harbor arrogance, matsar, or jealousy towards the sant or his satsangis? Meaning, if you are loyal towards this satsang, meaning religion, you shouldn't have any of these characteristics. These are just examples I wanted to take out from the Vachamrutha and point. Brahman Swami did not possess anything, but he was playing a role for all of us. Let's see what happens next. Finally, when Sri Hari came to know of this incident, he called both Muktanan Swami and Brahman Swami in the assembly. He asked Muktanan Swami, I have heard that you and Brahman Swami do not speak to each other. Is it true? Bra Muktan Swami respectfully said, Maharaj, I don't have any reason not to talk to Puja Swami. Then he revealed the matters that had taken place with Vasudevanan Swami. So Muktan Swami, Bhagwan already knew what had happened and everything. But just to kind of give us a show, um, Bhagwan asked and Muktan Swami said this was the issue, etc., so on and so forth. Then Brahman Swami realized his misunderstanding towards Muktan and Swami. He apologized and prostrated before Swami again and again, even though Swami pardoned him. All were stunned by seeing such an act. Now, this is a very great feat by Brahman and Swami. 
that he was performing Dhanwad Swami and asking for forgiveness like a little child would ask for forgiveness to a mother. Seeing this, everyone was stunned. Brahman Swami thought, why did this happen to me? Why did my mind grow jealous towards Muktan Swami? Now here, here is the whole, you can say, essence of why Brahman Swami became jealous for only seven days. Okay? Not more, not less. Now here we go. He said, Maharaj, when I was ill, so Brahman Swami thought, why did I become jealous? Then he figured out what had happened. So he said, Maharaj, when I was ill and my lifetime was about to end, meaning Brahman Swami one time became very, very, very sick and he was about to go to Akshardham and leave this body, okay? He did not at that time. This, this is why. Maharaj, when I was ill in my lifetime, in my lifespan, meaning his lifespan was about to end, the devotees requested me to uphold my life in exchange of their lifespan. So devotees were like, we'll give you our lifespan so you can live more, Swami, but stay on this earth and do good to all. Among them, a, quarrel, a quarrelsome old lady, meaning a very, very disturbed old lady, had given me seven days of her life. These were the days of that quarrelsome woman that had given me those, that had given me that life. As a result, I raised jealousy with Muktan Swami. Shortly, so what had happened was this old lady, she must have found out that Brahman Swami is, you know, about to uh, leave this body. So let me give my seven days to him. Now this old lady possessed a lot of jealousy, okay? Due to that, she did give those seven days to Swami. But what Swami was doing was he was kind of, uh, those seven days that he became jealous with Muktan Swami, were the days that were he was just filling those days of the old lady that had given the lifespan you understand it was kind of like uh he was just burning those seven days out because that lady was jealous those seven days that he ha she had given to him he had to go through that jealous jealous you can say nature for the seven days due to that brahman swami became jealous with muktan swami but in reality Swami did not possess anything, nor did any other santos. So this was just a role. In this lesson, we can learn that, number one, Bhagwan's ekantik sadhu, meaning his true saints, do not possess any kind of vicious bad natures. Number two, jealousy is a very, very bad evil nature that takes, takes us away from Bhagwan and his true ekantik sadhu. So we should not possess it. So saying this, we should learn from Muktan Swami's life that we should always talk good about others and we, can, we should help out at others as much as possible by obviously talking good and always stay compassionate towards others. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.